hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's having a great weekend. This is 50 Pips rocking and rolling 25th of October 2015. Not making any trade calls or recommendations because you're only you're responsible for the trades you may decide to take. The fact that you're listening to this means you've read, you understand, you accept all the disclosures and disclaimers on the blog, understanding that we're just performing some technical analysis in a learning context for educational purposes only. So, guys, what's going on? Very interesting week uh, shaping up. Keep in mind that we've got daylight savings time shift in Europe and in the UK, so mainline Europe and in the UK. So some, some of the uh, times will be off for a week until uh, New York catches up, so the US catches up. Now again, what to look for this week? Well, we got a couple of central banks speaking and some interesting data points. I mean, even though the real focus is gonna be on the central banks, right? We do have German IFO on Monday. We've got some trade balance uh, data out of New Zealand on Monday. We got uh, G preliminary D GDP out of the UK on Tuesday, core durable goods uh, out of the US on Tuesday too. So, you know, we do have some decent data points leading into uh, Wednesday with the CPI out of Australia, but really the focus is going to be this back end of the week. So Wednesday when we have the FOMC statement followed by the uh, RBNZ uh, rate statement. So that's going to be uh, very, very interesting. Uh, then on Thursday, we've got uh, a more unemployment advanced GDP out of the U.S. with some other Fed speakers. And then on Friday, really, uh, everybody's going to be ready for the BOJ to come out on the dance floor and see what we get out of them. So potential for a lot of movement we would say you clearly want to have your uh, get your helmets on this week okay so what are we looking for in terms of not an awful lot has happened except for you know some specific things obviously uh, uh, equities and, and the euro but really if we're looking at gold we're hovering here we were talking about that move back into the 1200 and we got, uh, you know, we got up to uh, 1190s and now we're moving back down. What we talked about, we talked about these uh, 1170s basically being a bull bear line for the day, uh, daily closes or, or, or above or below bullish or bearish. So right here, there is no reason why we couldn't see this retrace all the way back down into the 1150s. But we would suspect it to try uh, bids to come in and support. We'd suspect this mid range to still hold and that we have some unresolved business back at the 1200 level. Um, we'll have to see how this plays out, but we, you know, our assumption is still that we've put in the low on gold, and even though we might see a lot of sideways chop, ultimately we're going to be starting our rotation higher. So no big change there, nothing uh, really new on that chart. In terms of uh, cable, what's going on on cable? So we got a lot of... Uh, Nice negative closes, sellers in that 155. We've been talking about that 155 mark for a long time. And we talked about, you know, don't be confused if we get a lot of velocity of move inside this range, you could probably make a, a good case for the upside or the downside. But as long as we're stuck inside these uh, two moving averages, so this 100 and this 200 on the daily, we'll likely see an awful lot of chop. Now, the way this is trading on the open, we might uh, see this try to take some more stops to the downside on acceleration to the downside 5250s is the level to watch but you know we would not be surprised to see this pop right way back inside this range so the levels to watch for the week in terms of bull bear lines from a daily close are 155 and this uh, 15250 okay so as long as we're closing inside we're talking about a lot of velocity inside range and, and much to do about nothing if we start to close above the 155 then we could expect this to get a lot of an aggressive traction to the upside if we get daily closes below the 5250s then we would not be surprised to see the next 100 pips to the downside come fairly quick okay now Aussie what's going on on Aussie Aussie very choppy it looks like a bit of a correction we don't think that the case for a move back into the 74 75 mark is uh, is over unless we start to get a daily close back below if you want the 7150 so we still expect a lot of choppy action here if we get a daily close below the 7150s then probably uh, bets are off for this upside rotation and we'll likely see the market hold a very heavy tone and continue to try 
and slowly make its way back into the 69, 68s. But as long as we keep on getting bid bids supporting here, as long as we don't get a daily close below, we would expect the market to still try and make a bit of a move to the upside. We'll have to wait and see how this plays out. Euro GPB, the only thing I wanted to say here is I would be um, cautious about trying to be aggressive selling this. Uh, keep in mind, you've got the BOJ. So again, um, you know, the cells were here for a move back down. I wouldn't be trying to chase this as we're getting into very important support here. And also as we've got the BOJ. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if um, some of the shot shorts get caught off guard here. Uh, this whole level will be pivotal. I think there are far more interesting charts out there than this. Um, Kiwi, what's going on on Kiwi? So not a lot has changed. So we're talking about the 6800 being pivotal. We call this the bull bear line, right? And we said that daily closes above, we'd expect this to continue to take a stab back at the 7170s. And daily closes below, we would expect this to try and rotate back into this descending trend line that would act as support. And then we try that rotation higher. OK, so you see last week, this is a daily chart. So basically we got Friday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday. Fairly clear. We started the week daily close below and we held heavy all week. So right now, the big question going into the week is still. 6180s bull bear line it's all about the rbnz so we could see a lot of wheeling and dealing but as far as we're concerned right you know it's still all about those daily closes below or above the 68 for direction daily close back below here we would expect all bets for this rotation at least in the short term higher to be off and more downside as long even if we correct down as long as this area broadly speaking holds we could still see the correction higher that's the way we're looking at it um euro gpb again we're talking about selling that high range we expect this to move down in extensions lower our, our structural targets on this are 6260s a lot of very nice opportunities to sell up uh, into those highs, even though it's very choppy into those 7480s, right? And right here, it's holding heavy, you know, mid-range bull bear line for the week, but we're inside in this uh, choppy range here at lows, trying to move down in extensions. I mean, if you look at the other chart, there were a lot of very nice selling opportunities here. And then this kind of caught a lot of people off guard. And what we said is, okay, it broke higher. If it can hold above, then we would expect more aggressive correction. But remember, that's our range high. The moment this can't hold above, we expect this to continue back week. Very nice move all the way back down here. So going into the week, we'll have to see how we behave in this mid range. You know, most likely uh, even a bounce, you'd probably expect to see some sellers trying to come in here and, and press this down. I just be cautious trying to chase moves into the beginning of the week. And remember that there is a lot of event risk stacked up towards the back end of the week. Uh, CAD looking for direction and so far holding the support previous resistance acting as support from a weekly this is a big 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 pivotal level okay now from a shorter term outlook what we discussed was that we suspect you know either crude really has to get uh, smacked hard but something substantial really has to happen for us to trade back above the 135s and to get Momo above the 135s so this is the short term bull bear line but we expect sellers that trading off these highs getting short from these 32s looking for that correction back down remember this is what we call the ping pong zone 31 32 33 we had a lot of very interesting trading in this whole area in the past a lot of two-sided action so i think we expect a nice little trading opportunities inside this range but ultimately could be a very interesting place to try and play the short short side but we'll have to see it's not a done deal but it could be an interesting zone um es what's going on on the es so the es we've had this move right back up we talked about the fact that these uh 2000s were going to be pivotal and the fact that the market couldn't hold the first sell-off into the zone came back down made a higher low suggested that we had to go back up towards this higher part of the range to test the 50 
day moving 50 week moving average and 2070 range which was going to be the 78 point uh, uh, 78.6 uh, retracement of that move down you know this 50 back being lower odds simply because of this and this kind of action so right here the way this is trading, especially if it keeps on holding above this 50 and if it can get above the 2070s, there's a good chance that this is going to try and take a stab at those 21s and higher. But I think that even though understanding that one would have to be cautious because the way this is looking is that it could still be aggressive to the upside, we still think that the edge lies in looking for tactical shorts possible building shorts but not being in a hurry to get into trouble okay but clearly it's quite bullish here um usd jpy uh we warned a lot about everybody getting excited once we started to close back uh, uh below those 119s we said this is a very nice tradable range 119 120 121 but don't get excited on a close above or close below because there are a lot of different support zones and you've got all this and it's really not something we'd be too excited about trying to bet aggressively against the BOJ, right? So right here, there's some very nice action, even if you look at it on the daily, right? This uh, very aggressive buyers taking it all the way back up into the 119s and we kept on talking about it on Twitter. Um, you know, 120s attract, 120s attract, then, you know, it just got a lot of traction and, and, and it moved back through the 121. Uh, we weren't looking for that move to happen so quickly or so aggressively. We were expecting this to be a false break and we're expecting to see a move back into the 120. And our thought process was, well, we'll probably chop around here in this 120 all the way into the BOJ and then we'll have to CLB make or break time. It's just uh, got a bit of a decided to take a stab higher. So here, you know, even though, you know, gun to the head, you might have to look at some tactical shorts. But really, is that how you want to spend the week ahead of the BOJ? Probably not. But I think there should be some interesting opportunities here later on in the week. Um, what else have we got? Germany, uh, Germany again, you know, similar action to the ES. You know, these equities are pretty much all the same chart. We're looking for this to rotate back higher, at least back into this high range. Right now it's moving. So as long as it's holding above this high range, about these 10.647s, we'd expect it to continue to try and take a step back into this descending trend line. And then we'll have to see what happens here. Now, the tricky thing is that even though if technically this is a nice area to possibly look for shorts, the problem is uh, Super Mario on the dance floor, right? Because the, if the ECB keeps on talking about expanding QE and God knows if they're going to buy stocks, ETF, whatever, you know, it's a tricky one to try and get aggressive here. So I'd much rather focus on the ES if I had to look at an index rather than looking at DAX. Uh, USD CHF again we got very strong bids on the dollar and this is going to be an interesting place you know if there's any place where this should get a bit of a correction it's an interesting place again I wouldn't be looking to for massive structural shorts here trying to bet against the SMB but if anything this is an interesting place to watch an interesting chart to keep an eye out uh, going into the week guys so that's pretty much uh, where we stand keep in mind again there are some decent data points throughout the whole week but really the event risk is stacked up on that wednesday with that fomc and the rbnz and then don't forget the boe karuda on the dance floor on friday so again don't forget that it's also the end of the month so friday is going to be the last trading day of the month so you know don't 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 get in trouble the the, the last week of the month don't chuck away some decent gains uh, that you may have uh, put in locked in this month as we had a lot of very interesting trading opportunities uh, in the last week. And again, uh, stay focused on the task at hand. Okay, I'll post the recording, guys. Have an awesome one. Take care.